The human body isn't a machine. Each individual is a living, breathing organism created according to its unique genetic blueprint, which then interacts with its environment in complex ways. Everyone agrees we've got a big problem with obesity, but not everyone agrees what causes it. Least of all, is there any agreement on how we should fix obesity in our society? Most health authorities say the root cause of the problem is as simple as too much energy in, not enough energy out. That's why they think reducing everyone's calorie intake by a few hundred calories each day will resolve the obesity crisis. We don't think this is right. And more importantly, this approach has failed over and over again. The scientific evidence suggests obesity is a much more complex problem in which both our metabolism and the hormonal regulatory system that controls it, our endocrine system, get messed up. That means that overweight and obese people often feel hungry even when they've got more than enough food stored in their body. They then eat more and the more dependent they are on simple refined carbohydrates like sugars, white bread, pasta and pizzas, the less likely they are to burn fat. This dysregulation happens because of many things that are common with our modern lives. That includes relying too heavily on processed foods, eating too often, in other words, snacking on top of three meals a day, being stressed too much of the time, not sleeping properly, and of course being sedentary for hours every day. We started off by saying humans aren't machines, but to help understand what's going wrong so that we're in a better position to know how to put it right, Let's think of our bodies as a motor car. Carbohydrates, fats and protein aren't fuels, they're energy carriers. Our bodies actually have two fuels. One's called ATP, that stands for adenosine triphosphate. The other, ketones. We're built to be hybrids that can run off both of these fuels. But most people have become reliant only on ATP and get most of that ATP from just one energy carrier in the form of carbohydrates. We make ATP from carbohydrates, fats, or protein in tiny little energy factories called mitochondria that we have in nearly every cell in our bodies, especially muscle cells. But there are three important rules the body uses to keep us functioning in the absence of food because we've actually evolved to be better at dealing with fasting than we are to feasting. Rule number one. If we're relying mainly on carbohydrates for our fuel and we eat carbohydrates regularly throughout the day, our fat burning machinery becomes dormant. Rule number two, if we stop eating carbohydrates but have allowed our fat burning machinery to become dormant, we can burn protein to produce ATP. That system is there only for emergencies because the main protein energy carrier in our body is muscle. And who wants to burn their muscles? Rule number three. To get good at fat burning, we need to restrict carbohydrates and fast for extended periods, say five hours or more, or a lot more than that overnight, between eating or snacking. We call that intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. But what about our second fuel, ketones? We use the plural because there are three chemically distinct ketone bodies that our body uses beta-hydroxybutyrate, or BHB, being the most important. We produce these ketones in the liver, but they can only be generated when we burn fat in the absence of carbohydrates. Ketones are our long-range fuel that allow us to function really well in the absence of carbohydrates. That's why a lot of people refer to them as our endurance fuel. Our overeating and snacking culture means that a lot of people never get into the state we call nutritional ketosis, one that helps us produce just the right amount of ketones to use for fuel. There's a bonus too. Ketones are our brain's favorite fuel. Our brain prefers ketones even to glucose. You might have come across people who've been working hard all day long, saying they forgot to eat but their minds stayed crystal clear. That's often because they've been relying on ketones. We've identified so far that the engine of our cars have got messed up because of the way so many of us live. That's why focusing on putting slightly less fuel in the tank, as health authorities are suggesting, simply doesn't work. People just fill up more often. We need to focus on what's wrong with our engines 
When we've fixed our engines, we can easily shift our metabolism into a state of nutritional ketosis whenever we need. We'll become what we call metabolically flexible. And it's at that point we earn our badge saying that we're keto adapted.